All right, so last night I finished the Ereticus Heresy, and one thing I told everybody I was going to do was I was going to keep myself busy going from series to series. Now, this one is a long series, and it's an ongoing one. This was done by a fan with too much time on his hands. It has been requested by so many people at this point that I have simply lost track of them all. And some people have deliberately joined the channel and the Discord to request this to me. So, we're going to be starting today on Star Wars vs. Warhammer 40k, Episode 1, Emperors and Dark Gods. Now, I learned some lessons doing the Theoreticus Heresy. Uh, the first of which is, basically, this is, all, this is probably going to be the only long-form intro that I do. Most of the time that I react to this in the future, it's going to be picking it up, saying hey, and then immediately diving right into it. And uh, giving some thoughts and stuff like that throughout the episode. Um, I'm going to be doing these one at a time. I have looked through the playlist, and some of these get rather lengthy, upwards of an hour. Um, so I'm going to be trying to do one of these every few days instead of trying to do knockout two, you know, when I do an episode of this. So we're going to go ahead and start Star Wars vs. Warhammer 40K. I'm kind of interested to see, well, pretty much how this is set up and how this is carried out. Um, without anything else being said, I think that's it. Um, let's dive right on into it. Stars dance in the eyes of the Emperor, and roll in the palms of dark gods. Chapter Master Orion Phaedrus had heard such words before, and often they were followed by tales of ships arriving at their destinations before ever leaving for them. Stories about entire battle fleets traversing time in both directions at the apparent whims of the boiling warp. But he had never, in his 700 years of service to the Emperor, heard or read of anything quite like this. Confirm these reports. He ordered his mind wary of demonic deceptions and alien illusions. The large man kneeling before his throne seemed to wince at that, raising his head to plead and speak. We already have, my lord. The astrogator said, exasperation thickened every syllable that slid from his wet lips. Eight times before it was reported to me, and then I personally verified it ten times before bringing this report to the captain. My peers verified it five additional times when it was decided to bring this to you. With respect, your beneficence, there isn't any more verification we can do with our current instruments and personnel. What exactly are you suggesting? The ancient, half-machine warrior king asked, his voice as cold and calm as frigid steel. I... I... I his head astrogator sputtered. He was a wide man, fat, and Orion had never had cause to speak with his current head astrogator personally. The man was known for being marginally more competent than he was shamefully corpulent and given that he required servo limbs to aid in carrying his anemic bulk around the ship, he was a fairly good astrogator. Uh, I, I think we need to get closer, he finally managed, mopping at his sweat-laden brow with a red cloth. <laughs> we must land within the nearest detectable system and, and verify what we are seeing with our own hands, if not our eyes. The chapter master said nothing, leaving the man kneeling and sweating before his throne for almost a minute. Gradually, 
He nodded. Return to your station. He ordered, and the mortal kneeling before him wasted no time in obeying, hoisting himself off the ground with his spider-like assembly and shuffling from the metal antechamber that served as Orion's command center and bridge. A scant second after the astrogator had removed himself from view, Company Captain Aurelian Tex approached the command throne, saluting smartly to his commander. He was the youngest captain by far, barely cresting over a hundred standard years of service. He was a prodigy within the chapter, a genius with a sword, and an equally proficient pilot and gunner. As was typical within their order, the chapter master took some pains to keep the young captain close, both to mentor the man and to judge him. What do you make of it? the marine asked. Orion did not speak, did not answer at all for a moment, as plans and probabilities boiled behind his yellow eyes. Eventually he broke from his contemplation to ask his own question. Is Kila still incapacitated? The captain of the third company shrugged his shoulders with a soft, mechanical sigh. His face looked sour suddenly as he was made to contemplate the words of that mutant woman. Hmm. The navigator isn't in critical condition any longer, he said curtly. But, the chapter master pressed, sensing more behind his subordinate's words. But she hasn't stopped crying. She insists that the emperor, that the emperor is, that he must be, don't. The chapter master warned mm -hmm. softly. The captain nodded and quickly changed the subject. So, uh, what do you make of it? He asked again. Orion rose from his command throne, carefully lifting the sacred blade, the mighty Serpentis Venandi, as he strode over to one of the large, glowing, hololithic displays. This one displayed the galaxy, and indicated their current position several light years beyond its languidly turning borders. <laughs> I cannot be certain, but my eyes are honed and often find the truth and the truth that I perceive, the yield of my vigilance appears to reveal that either something has utterly remade the galaxy in a way that was previously unthinkable to us, or when we tried to breach that thin tendril of the Cicatrix Maledictum, the warp flung us to the border of an entirely different galaxy, perhaps even a different dimension entirely. The captain looked at the same hololith, coming to stand beside his master. His brows furrowed, and Orion knew without looking at him that he disagreed, even before the younger demigods. Okay, I'm going to stop this right here just to put in some thoughts. Number one, I don't know what I was expecting. I was not expecting this. This has been thought through. And so far, I'm I'm looking... I. I really want to see where this goes now. Um, good job all around. I'm hooked. Let's go. Spoke. Is there perhaps not another answer? The captain asked. I can see that the Eye of Terror is not present. But does that really indicate that we are within a whole different galactic disk? Is it not possible that we were merely lost within the warp for a much longer period of time than we expected? And that the Imperium conquered the warp while we were gone? Orion shook his head. It is not the lack of the miserable Eye of Terror that I find unbelievable. It is the missing Astronomicon that makes me think we cannot be looking upon our home. The captain shrugged. Perhaps it is just blocked. Such things have happened on the far side of the Secretrix Maledictum. Orion laughed at that, a bitter, unamused sound. A fine theory, but blocked by what? The eye is gone, the tear with it. Other things could... The captain started to say, Crew, Orion interjected. Play the audio of the chief navigator's words, the last words she spoke before we had to drag her out of her nest. At this, the crew hesitated. My lord, are you sure? Asked one of the bridge officers. Orion nodded. Everyone present has heard it before. Your faith should not be so weak that you cannot bear to hear it again. At his prompting, the officer complied, 
adjusting some of the controls upon the panel he sat before. In short order, the voice of Kila Shastrava began to bleat over the Vox casters on the bridge, her words retched between bouts of sobbing and shuddering sorrow. By the weeping stars I can see, for the first time I can see, and my sight blinds me. Woe to us, woe to the world and the universe, for my eyes can see all, and yet the light of the Emperor has faded completely. Woe, woe to us, for our Lord in the stars shines no longer. Woe, we are made orphans, for our Father has died. Okay. Impossible. Stars danced at his command, rolled in the palms of his hands, and yet those deceitful little specks had hidden something from him, something enormous, something which could shift the careful balance he had spent the last four years creating. And the worst part about it was that he didn't even know, at least not yet, what precisely they had hidden from his sight. Palpatine had been informed of the unexpected gravitational disturbances by a mid-level hyperlane service report. Hundreds of thousands of ancient hyperlane buoys, most of which had been presumed to be underpowered and non-functional, had come alive nearly all at once. The report showed a cascading effect originating from a point in space a few hundred light years away from Pazab, a backwater world at the very edge of the outermost part of the outer rim. The fact that Pazab had no buoys around it only emphasized the unprecedented nature of the disturbance. But this was not something that would have drawn his attention normally. The Dark Lord of the Sith was only marginally interested in space anomalies and phenomenon and not at all if they could not expand his knowledge of the Force or be turned to function within his design. A curiosity, and nothing more, that is what anyone reading this report would have drawn from it. But Palpatine had known about the disturbance well before the report had been delivered to him, for he had felt it through a different vector, the Force. Something dark had just entered into the near boundaries of his soon-to-be-claimed galactic dominion, something which screamed and howled in voices the dark side had never used before. Hmm. Palpatine knew it could only mean one thing. Rivals! Grim forces of a darker galaxy had arrived to stake a claim on what was his. And the sense of them made him feel a power which he had been loath to use before. The intoxicating strength of fear added itself to his arsenal, for what he sensed now was no mere chaff to be blown away, no Jedi-like force to abuse and deceive. Crawling ever closer, he sensed a threat he had thought silenced forever when his crackling power had executed the drunk and foolish Sith Lord who had called himself Palpatine's master. The threat of other masters of the dark side, and the plurality he felt approaching only heightened the sense of danger he now perceived. But even though he had already felt it, the report was important, vital in fact because while Darth Sidious was a master of the dark side and deeply attuned to such things, Sheev Palpatine, kindly chancellor of the embattled Galactic Republic, was most decidedly not. Initially, he thought to wait until the Jedi brought the matter to him, thinking they too would sense the arrival of the oncoming threat. But as days dragged by, Sidious oh, okay. found himself vexed by his own competence. He had blinded the Jedi and had done so with a great amount of intention. Even sitting within his room, speaking with him, surrounded by his dwarty statues, the Jedi could not catch even a whiff of his true nature. 
While he was a great deal more subtle than these newcomers, he was also a great deal closer to the Jedi, and these outsiders had not even entered the galaxy yet. By the time the Jedi realized the threat, it would destroy them, just as surely as Sidious himself would have, and that would not do. <laughs> Thus, the report. And you really think this deserves this kind of attention? Asked the Jedi Knight Renfi. Palpatine smiled calmly and nodded, completely negating his desire to scrunch his nose at the hissing, slurring accent of the Trandoshan Jedi before him. It was bad enough to be a pathetic, parasitic reptile warming itself on the power of the Republic, did it also need to be a Trandoshan as well? Most likely not, wow. but I would like to be sure. Wow. These readings are quite unprecedented, and it stokes my anxiety to simply allow whatever is causing them to pass us by unobserved. He said, fingers folded in front of him on his wide desk. Hmm, I suppose, the Jedi said. Creamy but sheep. why clones? Why not send a survey team instead? He added. The impertinent fool. Oh, I shall send scientists and researchers with you as well, the Chancellor assured. But it is unprecedented, so I would not send them out there without protection. Besides, we can never underestimate the enemy we are currently facing. Even if the Separatists have nothing to do with what caused these readings, they have buoys of their own. I cannot rule out the possibility that they will also attempt their own investigation. The Jedi considered for a second before nodding his assent. I see the wisdom in this, he said. Good, good, Palpatine added. Then I'd be glad to send you on your way as quickly as possible. Like I said, we don't want this phenomenon to pass us by. I already have a science team picked out and ready to go. How many battalions do you command currently? Currently? Two. Make it four. I'll have you reinforced before you leave. The <laughs> Jedi gave a shallow bow of respect and Sheev smiled. Thank you, Chancellor. He said. Creamy Sheev is up to no good. Please, do not mention it. Simply promise me that you will take care to remain safe. Odd things are said to linger near the edge of the galaxy. Our war is maybe a month from its close. I'd not have you miss it because of a tragedy on the frontier. Keep your men close about you. The knight nodded. I will, Chancellor. Do you truly believe it might end so fast? Sheev leaned back and smiled. Trust me, my Jedi friend. I am an- Look at this face! Look at this face! Like, this this dude looks like the worst insurance salesman on, in the history of mankind. Like, why would you trust somebody that's smiling at you like this? Like, look, look. Look, like, look at this. This is just not something you trust right here. Even the dogs don't trust him. An expert in such sorry things as war and peace, these matters can move suddenly, and mark my words, it will be over before you know it. Okay. Alright. All right. So, we are going to continue on this road uh, one at a time. We're just going to keep on doing these as long as they have, as long as this guy keeps on doing them. Um, here it is. That's episode one. So we have. <sighs> now I'm going to be interested to see how. 40k actually goes along with this considering the maledictum is already opened but um 
you know, I, I've always been one to say that if the Galactic Empire at its height were to invade the Imperium, especially now during the, uh, like, like, right after the Indominus Crusade, it would be such a strain on 40k itself and I don't think that um I don't think the Imperium itself could handle doing an invasion on a galactic scale considering all the problems it has now I don't think it could um I mean you're talking about putting out a bushfire putting out a bushfire putting out a bushfire and then all of a sudden a meteor hits and then you're really in some shit but in any case we're gonna continue watching this I'm gonna post these tonight and um yeah episode two soon I'll see you guys next time. Please uh, leave a like and subscribe if you're coming in from coming in. And um, if you have any recommendations for things for me to watch, pop into the Discord channel. I have a Patreon down below. Everything else like that. You guys all know the drill. I'll catch you guys then. <laughs>